is it sets the name shrink and it sets the shrink name to place zero zero and then what I is at the moment. So uh, on the first time that it iterates, which is going through the for loop, I will perform so it. The first time it goes through this loop, it will say place equals zero zero one. The second time will be place zero zero two. And the reason I've got zero in the middle here is because this i is a index zero. But if I add a number one here, Um, I set this to in ball equals two or something like that. Um, basically, what it would do is it would say place o o one two something like that. Basically, that is just this item. Yeah, so it's simple as that, really. And um, basically. We're going to do the same for the description. Script uh, shrink description equals string dot format. This is a description. Zero. In zero object argument zero here. This is this means argument zero. So the argument zero will be name. So overall, this will mean it's going to say on the first iteration, this is a description of. It'll come up here. Place zero zero and it will appear one. And the second one will say two, and the third will say three, etc. So what I'm going to do now is set the shrink uh, image URL, the URI even, equals uh, string dot format. Slash images slash image O what do I call them? Image O one O zero dot JPEG and argument zero is going to be I and that's the reason why I name my images image 01, image 02, image 03, etc, etc. It's so it could easily be referenced through this here. So on number on one, the first iteration, it's going to load slash images slash image O, and it's going to load I, which is one. So it loads picture. The second one will be two, one is the third, will be three, etc, etc. So we're going to add a new note. We're going to add the places list. And it's gonna add my bad. And it's gonna add uh, new places. And you see open parentheses uh, name equals the name we set here, the new name um, description equals the new description that we made here. And the image source will equal image UI. We're going to close the, the new class we made and we're going to apply that. We're going to finish it with a semicolon. So, uh, after it's made this loop, it's going to set the list box item source to the places list. So, every item this places list. It'll add to the list box, and the reason you see the layout is because every item that you see is ugh, every item you see is um, displayed with an item template, and for each item that it will display, it will 
it will have a stack panel. And a stack panel is an easy way to display more than one item in a data template. If you didn't have a stack panel and you wanted to display items with a name and a description, it wouldn't work because a data template only really allows you to place one item. But a stack panel allows you to place more than one. So it's going to give us, it's going to make a stack panel with one item, and that one item is going to contain a image source, uh, another stack panel, which is going to contain a two text blocks, one with a name and description tag. So I hope you understand that. Uh, it closes the stack panels and then closes the data template and then closes all this box item template and finally all this box itself. So when we go through this, what we're expecting to see is five different images and five different text boxes and five different text boxes for descriptions. And it's going to be laid out exactly like this. Each one's going to be only about 100. It's going to be placed in the same place, but it's going, it's going to have the same margin left and right, but it's going to be placed further vertically down, and you can be able to scroll up it, etc, etc. So let's try this, and I'm going to debug it. And... Oops. You'll see here from the first part of the tutorial, we have John and Bob with their contact numbers, and we have our places, place one, place two, it's three, it's four, it's five. As I told you before, we've got image 001, image 02, image 03, image 04, image 05, and we've got the description one, two, three, four, five. So that's how it works, basically. And I think it's a very clean way to lay out the lists. And um, you can stop debugging. And that, I think, is all I wanted to show you this lesson. And next lesson, just leave a comment. Tell me what you would want to see in the next tutorial, and I'll try and figure something out. So, um, yep, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll see you at a later date.